Now that we have created the clusters using the k-means, we can go ahead and compute uh, using the genetic distance a phylogram or dendrogram. And um, first I'm going to install these packages or the libraries for NAM and phylogram. And then I want to merge together the metadata that I have. So the PI, the name of the PI lines, as well as the entry numbers together with the genotypic data, so the SNP data, merge it together by name. And we can take a look at that. And so we have name, entry number, uh, country, maturity group, uh, genetic background, and then the SNP data from then on. And I want to convert that into a matrix, but I only want to take the SNP data. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, here I'm looking at just uh, column six and on. So here we have it now, um, the new matrix that I've created. Uh, it's column six and on. So all the SNP data and only the SNP data. And we can look at the grouping data as well, which we did in the previous video in which we have uh, the name of the of the genotypes and their subpopulation or clusters that we've clustered them into. So first we want to just create a vector of the subpopulation um, across the 292 genotypes that we're looking at and um, we want to um, bind them together using this FST function um, looking at the genetic variation associated with the markers distributed among these subpopulations or uh, clusters. Uh, the function generates a plot for structure diagnosis, so that's what we want to do. And it will take a little bit to create that plot in which it kind of hems together uh, the genotypic information as well as the, sub, um, the family information is what we're calling it here. And we can look at that and look at where the variation across the genome is of all the SNP data. We then want to compute the genetic distance using the NI distance. Uh, there are multiple different techniques to, to or multiple methods to do this. Um, we're going to use the default with the NI dis distance, and you can see the G dist uh, documentation for more information. So we've created um, we've created an object here, gdist, and we want to perform words D clustering on that gdist. And if you've done this before, or you done clustering in R, you'll be very familiar with um, this each cluster using words D, or there's other methods like Pearson or Spearman or, or whatever you want to um, utilize in your research. But it will create um, a hierarchical cluster. So that's what that's what we would like to do. And uh, we've called it fit, and we'd like to plot fit. And lo and behold, we have our cluster dendrogram or phylogram created in which we have the genotypes, 292 genotypes, and then the tree that binds them together depending on their genetic distance, which was calculated um, by the SNP data, the genotypic data that we inputted. So next line, I believe, just turns it sideways. Um, so if you're if you're wanting to use it for your display um, that way, and I believe I wanted to um, can show this last plot, which is to create a circular radial, um, stretch it around in a radial position, uh, just uh, for a cool effect for a presentation. And what we'll do in the future is we can color those different genotypes based on uh, based on the, the family or the cluster or uh, subpopulation that they're in. And that's all I have for this video. And next we'll be looking at creating uh, PCA uh, plots using this genotypic information.